stories of people and places. Priceless treasures or humble keepsakes. Each with a beginning, none with an ending. The reason? They vanished without trace. Richard Halliburton, born Brownsville, Tennessee, the year 1900. Studies at Princeton University. At 19 years, the quiet and shy Halliburton begins to show first signs of restlessness. He leaves America, crosses the Atlantic, tours the continent. A year later, returns home. His father asks him to take up his studies to become an engineer. He refuses, decides the profession of his choice. Visits a New York publisher to satisfy his ambition. Hmm? Oh, uh, uh, Burton, isn't it? Uh, yes. Uh, Halliburton, uh, sir. Richard Halliburton. Hmm? Oh, yes. Uh, take a seat, take a seat. Uh, just finishing this manuscript. Uh, now, let's see here, page 324. Of Tennessee, sir. Hmm? You said, uh, the Tennessee Halliburton, sir. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, now, where, where was I, uh, 324. <coughs> End of chapter. Hmm. Uh, well, now, uh, Tennessee Burton, uh, you had an appointment? Richard Halliburton, sir, of Tennessee. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And uh, you brought your manuscript? Well, I haven't written it yet, sir. Just thought I'd call in to see you first. Find out if you were interested in travel books. You know the type I mean, sir. I'm a publisher, Burton. My business to know. Halliburton, sir. Yes, 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 yes. And you want to know about travel books, hmm? Well, uh, what I know about them says they don't sell. People have lost interest. Can't afford to travel, so they don't buy the book. Well, I've just returned from the continent, sir, and I What they I... need is a book with a central character. Adventure stuff. Uh, fire in the blood sort of thing. Uh, you know, uh, no, 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 let's see, uh, Sir Galahad and the Sainted Dragon sort of story. It was St. George, sir, and he was the saint, not the dragon. Yeah, what I said, what I said. And that's what they want today. Uh, you were St. George Burton? How I... No, sir, but I'm... But, but I, I think I see what you mean. You want a true life adventure story. That's it, my boy. That's it. Right on the head. Right on the head. Here are now one, two below the belt. There fire in the blood and uh, lots of fireworks. But uh, no gunshots, no bloodshed at all. Uh, people don't like bloodshed. No, sir. Not anymore. Not anymore. Well, if I climb the mountain, sir... You think the public would like that? That's right, my boy. Go climb the mountain. Uh, yes, and now I must finish this manuscript. And uh, uh, Yes, yes, sir. Go climb the mountain. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, 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 any particular mountain? Mm, any particular... Uh, no, no, no. Just pick your own and then come and see me. Uh, okay? Uh, fine, fine, fine. Uh, always characters. Always characters. Uh, now, where was I? Uh, I said, P324. Richard Halliburton leaves the publisher's office, finds a travel agency, walks inside. Yes, sir? I want to climb the Matterhorn. Would you make the necessary arrangements? The Matterhorn. Nature's 15,000-foot tombstone to mountaineers. A snow-covered pinnacle of treacherous rock face constantly lashed by the fury of high-altitude storms. And Richard Halliburton's experience on mountains? None. Monsieur. Monsieur Halliburton. You eye me as a mountain guide, not as a runner. <laughs> You're getting older, far. I am no snail on the mountainside, monsieur. But you... You are the crazy American. I've got a job to do, Lafar, that's all. I've got a story to write. So now, where do we go from here? You want to take the rope up this time, or shall I? I will take it, monsieur. You just catch me if I fall. <laughs> I tell you, the Matterhorn's been climbed 40, 50 times. But never like this. Never like the way Halliburton tells it. I tell you, this story's going to sweep the whole 48 states. The manuscript is accepted, becomes a book. Richard Halliburton, an American hero. His book, a bestseller. 
And then one day the New York publisher receives another manuscript, postmarked Cairo, <laughs> Egypt. Uh, just take a look at this one. I tell you, this boy's got the greatest imagination. <laughs> Uh, sleeping on top of the pyramid. <laughs> and uh, look at this, look. Uh, swam in the Taj Mahal. Actually swam in it. <laughs> I tell you, the public are going to love it. Love it. And love him they do. The American people applaud their hero. Acclaim him in practical fashion. They buy his books and make them bestsellers. And all the time his publisher discredits the truth of the stories, puts them down to a fertile imagination, a figment of fiction in the mind of a dreamer. In the romantic brain of a travel adventurer, Richard Halliburton. <laughs> oh, what a mind that boy's got. Just listen to this one. He swam the Hellespont. And both ways, mind you. <laughs> why, why, that's never been done since Lord Byron swam it to write the poem. While well, the publisher laughs and glories in his new world of bestsellers, Richard Halliburton obeys another impulse. Plans a stunt which will bring not just America to his feet, but readers throughout the world. He calls in the governor of the Panama Canal Zone. What was that you said, sir? I want to swim the Panama Canal, sir. Swim the canal? Oh, it's ridiculous. Completely out of the question. What do you want to swim it for? Well, you see, sir, I'm a writer, and I've got a story to write. And you thought... Well, well, it, it's a good story, sir. Swim the Panama Canal from the Pacific to the Caribbean. The canal's alive with alligators, man-eating barracudas, and typhoid. Filthy with the stuff. Suicides who attended. Sheer lunacy. Then you refuse, sir? Of course I refuse. Perhaps this letter is, uh... uh I mean, it might help you change your mind, sir. Letter? Better let me see. Well, it appears, Halliburton, you are not without influence. Thank you, sir. Then I can start my swim next Monday morning? Well, it seems I have no choice of refusal. But I'd like to know how you intend to swim the 52 impossible miles. Quite simply, sir. I'll have a man with a rifle following me in a small boat. He can shoot any alligators or sea snakes likely to bother me. So Halliburton attempts the impossible enters the canal waters of Panama and begins a slow but mile-eating crawl towards the Atlantic. Pushes against the tide of fortune, brushes fears aside and swims from beginning to end of the 50-mile canal, even to insisting on being pumped to the higher levels in the massive locks where giant ships are raised 85 feet to the level of Lake Gatun. His relative tonnage computed at 1 13th of a ton. His toll charge, 36 cents. Halliburton continues the incredible, astounds the world and his now believing but frantic publisher. He climbs the 16,000-foot volcano, Popocatapetl, but on reaching the crater, his camera falls from cold, numb fingers and the pictorial record of his climb is destroyed. And then, on his return, Halliburton overhears these words in the little Mexican bar. You know, I don't think this Halliburton got up as far as the crater. That camera business was just an excuse to get out of a failure. I'm afraid I overheard that remark, sir. Huh? You, you're... And after you're... tomorrow, I'd like you to prepare an apology. But I only Because I'll it... go climb that volcano again. And this time I'll see you won't drop my camera. And with quiet determination, Halliburton completes his climb. And another new novel becomes a bestseller. Well, now, Halley, we did it again, eh? <laughs> another bestseller on the way out? Yes, sir, I guess it is, but if you'll excuse me... Uh, uh, but, but wait, uh, you've only just got here. Well, I guess I'm also just leaving, sir. But, sir, uh, well, uh, where to this time, Halley? I want to retrace Hannibal's journey, the way he did it. You're going to... That's right, sir. Across the Swiss Alps on an elephant. <laughs> By this time, Halliburton selling his books before they're written, and his exploits and wandering feet keep him moving around the globe. Adventures in forbidden Tibet, in Siberia, where he interviews the man who killed the Tsar of Russia, into Yucatan, where he dives 70 feet into the sacred well of the Mayans, a dive which nearly costs him his life with a broken neck. And then, his return home and an interview with his publisher. 
Sure, well, my boy. Seems we've done it again, eh? We've done it again, sir? Yes, I guess we have. We're the last one coming up. That's what I like to hear. Another... What do you mean, last one? I'm going to take that piece of advice you've always offered me. I never told you to retire. You told me to take it easy. Use my imagination instead of my neck. Well, yes, but to your public... Twenty years is a long time to tease fate. I can't go doing this thing forever. Yes, yes, you're right. Well, my boy, what's it to be this time? Just a quiet little cruise from Hong Kong to the Golden Gate to San Francisco in a Chinese junk. Richard Halliburton arrives in Hong Kong and then, with a group of young American adventurers, sets the bows of his colorful Chinese junk toward the open sea and San Francisco. Excuse me, Captain. First mate reports an unusual craft on our port bow, sir. That could be a Chinese junk, sir. But in these waters... Well, I'll take a look through my glass. Ooh, it's a Chinese junk, all right, Sanders. By its bright colors, I'd say it was a sea dragon. You know, that Halliburton also fellow. Oh, well, thank you, Carter. It looks like they just sent us a radio message, sir. Mm-hmm. Having a wonderful time on bully beef and hardtack. Wish you were here instead of me. Signed, Richard Halliburton. <laughs> he seems to have a sense of humor. Oh, well, they'll be at Wake Island by morning. They can rest there. But the sea dragon does not arrive at Wake Island, nor is it seen at Midway. Days move into weeks, and then a month goes by without any ship reporting the gaily colored vessel. The world begins to wonder, is the idol of millions still approaching the harbor of San Francisco, or has Richard Halliburton, adventurer and author, finally met his fate? and one naval cruiser search 152,000 miles of ocean and find no trace of the sea dragon or any sign of wreckage. People begin to say it's a publicity stunt for Halliburton's next book. But the facts remain. The sea dragon has never been seen again since it passed over the horizon in March 1939. After all his fantastic exploits, Richard Halliburton, adventurer, stuntman, author, on a colorful and tranquil voyage, simply vanished without trace. Vanish Without Trace is written by John Warwick and produced by Jim Bradley for our transit. No bloodshed at all. People don't like bloodshed. No, sir. Not anymore. Not anymore. Well, if I climbed a mountain, sir, you think the public would like that? That's right, my boy. Go climb a mountain. Uh, yes, sir. Now I must finish this manuscript. And, uh, uh, yes, yes, sir. Go climb a mountain. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, 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 any particular mountain? Mm, any particular... Uh, no, no, no. Just pick your own and then come and see me. Uh, okay? Uh, fine, fine, fine. Uh, always characters. Always characters. Uh, now, where was I? Uh, I said page 324. Richard Halliburton leaves the publisher's office, finds a travel agency, walks inside. Yes, sir? I want to climb the Matterhorn when you make the necessary arrangements. The Matterhorn. Nature's 15,000-foot tombstone to mountaineers. Stories of people and places, priceless treasures, or humble keepsakes. Each with a beginning, none with an ending. The reason? They vanished without trace.
Richard Halliburton. Born Brownsville, Tennessee, the year 1900. Studies at Princeton University. At 19 years, the quiet and shy Halliburton begins to show first signs of restlessness. He leaves America, crosses the Atlantic, tours the continent. A year later, returns home. His father asks him to take up his studies to become an engineer. He refuses, decides the profession of his choice. Visits a New York publisher to satisfy his ambition. Hmm? Oh, uh, uh, Burton, isn't it? Uh, yes. Uh, Halliburton, uh, sir. Richard Halliburton. Hmm? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, take seat, take seat. Uh, just finishing this manuscript. Uh, Let's see here, uh, page 324. Of Tennessee, sir. Hmm? You said, uh, the Tennessee Halliburton, sir. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, well, now, where, where was I? Uh, 324. End of chapter. Hmm. Uh, well, now, uh, Tennessee Burton, uh, you had an appointment? Richard Halliburton, sir, of Tennessee. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And uh, you brought your manuscript? Well, I haven't written it yet, sir. Just thought I'd call in to see you first. Find out if you were interested in travel books. You know the type I mean, sir. I'm a publisher, Burton. My business to know. Halliburton, sir. Yes, 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 yes. And you want to know about travel books, hmm? Well, uh, what I know about them says they don't sell. People have lost interest. Can't afford to travel, so they don't buy the book. Well, I've just returned from the continent, sir, and I what thought What they I... need is a book with a central character. Adventure stuff. Uh, fire in the blood sort of thing. Uh, you know, uh, mm, 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 let's see, uh, Sir Galahad and the Sainted Dragon sort of story. It was St. George, sir, and he was the saint, not the dragon. Uh, what I said, what I said. And that's what they want today. Uh, you were St. George Burton... How I... No, sir, but I'm... But, but I, I think I see what you mean. You want a true-life adventure story. That's it, my boy. That's it. Right on the head. Right on the head. Here are now one, two, below the belt. Uh, fire in the blood and uh, lots of fireworks. But uh, no gunshots. A snow-covered pinnacle of treacherous rock face constantly lashed by the fury of high-altitude storms. And Richard Halliburton's experience on mountains? None. Monsieur, Monsieur Ali Burton, you eye me as a mountain guide, not as a runner. <laughs> You're getting older, far. I am no snail on a mountainside, Monsieur. But you, you are the crazy American. I've got a job to do, Lafar, that's all. i got a story to write. So now, where do we go from here? You want to take the rope up this time, or shall I? I will take it, Monsieur. You just catch me if I fall. <laughs> I tell you, the Matterhorn's been climbed 40, 50 times, but never like this. Never like the way Halliburton tells it. I tell you, this story's going to sweep the whole 48 states. The manuscript is accepted, becomes 